If you've ever built a PC or just watched tech YouTubers enough, you'll be familiar with thermal paste. It's the, the grey goopy stuff that you spurt onto your CPU before you plunk a big cooler down on top. Sometimes the cooler has some pre-applied, other times you have to install it yourself, but either way, it's kind of messy. If you take the cooler off, you have to wipe it all away and apply new fresh paste and it can leak everywhere. And don't get me started on why you can find thermal paste fingerprints everywhere around my house. So what's the deal? Why can't we use something like this, a thermal pad instead? I mean, it's not one-time use. It's a mostly solid object, so there's nothing to, to leak out, and you shouldn't need to replace it after every insertion and removal, so why aren't we all using these instead? I mean, this must be another conspiracy by big fan to keep you buying more and more thermal paste, right? I mean, a consumable item that you have to replace every time you take your cooler off, meaning you have to buy more and more tubes of it. Well, actually, yeah, it's, uh, it actually makes sense, and here's why. This is Arctic's APT2560 a high-performance thermal pad with actually almost identical thermal conductivity to their latest and greatest paste, the Arctic MX-5. They sent over both this paste and their various sizes from 0.5mm thick to 1.5mm thick, although for this testing I'll be using the thinnest 0.5mm version. Let's take a look at the thermals with ambient correction between this 0.5 millimeter thick pad and this shiny new slightly blue tinged MX5 paste. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a that's a pretty big difference. You're looking at 87 degrees Celsius peak with the thermal pad and just 64 degrees Celsius uh, on this Ryzen. 5900X with Arctic's own Liquid Freezer 2 360 ARGB running in Cinebench R20 multi-threaded for 30 minutes while using the paste. To say that's a sizable advantage for the paste, I think would be the understatement of the century. And the difference doesn't stop there. Look at the core ratios. The orange pad line is noticeably lower, meaning that the CPU is running actively slower wet than when properly cooled with the paste. While rendering the gooseberry scene in Blender, it's the same painful temperature differential. But more importantly, see that gap at the end, where the blue line ends but the orange line continues? That's not just me messing around with the data, that's where the thermal paste run ended. There was almost a 30 second difference there where the pad ran around 200 megahertz lower clock speeds throughout the run thanks to the temperatures. That's a massive difference and of course that's without trying to overclock the CPU with precision boost overdrive, something that the paste is more than capable of doing, but the pad? Yeah, no chance. So why is the pad that much worse. I mean, if it has the same thermal conductivity of around 6 watts per meter kelvin as the paste, it should perform just as well, right? Well, sure, if you were to, uh, if you're able to use as much paste as there is pad. The reason why every PC build guide says use a, a grain of rice sized drop of thermal paste isn't to help you conserve your precious supply of this stuff, it's because using too much paste actively hurts performance, and this type of pad is basically like adding a full 4 gram tube of paste all at once. To understand why you really can have too much thermal paste, you need to know what it's actually there for. The thing is, you totally could just mount your CPU cooler direct to your chip, no thermal interface or TIM required. But if you do, you'll quickly find out that that sucks and your CPU is overheating. There are a number of factors for why that's the case, 
but realistically the main one is that neither your CPU nor your CPU cooling block are perfectly flat. They'll be slightly bowed, either concave or convex, one corner might be slightly lower or higher than the other, and the metals themselves also aren't perfectly smooth. They'll have bumps and dents that will cause air to be trapped between the CPU and the cooling plates, and that's really bad. See, air is an insulator, actually a really good one, as its thermal conductivity at room temperature is around 0.026 watts per meter kelvin. So those little pockets of air are basically refusing almost all of the heat energy that uh, you know, your chip is generating and forcing it into those much smaller places of direct contact where the metals actually touch. That reduces the effective surface area drastically to the point where it's no longer effectively cooling your CPU. So by adding some thermal paste, what you're doing is replacing all of that air with a material that's over 200 times more thermally conductive, meaning it can more evenly transfer that heat out of your chip and into your cooling plate across basically the whole surface area or the whole surface area of at least the cooling plates. Uh, and so that's much more thermally efficient. So more paste is better, right? Well, here's the thing. Aluminium's thermal conductivity is somewhere around 240 watts per meter Kelvin and copper, well, that's somewhere around 400. So the ideal solution is actually to not have any paste and have a perfectly flat mount between them so that it's the absolute most thermally efficient. But failing that, what you want is the least amount of paste you can get away with to fill in those air gaps, but ideally still allow any direct contact that could happen. Or again, failing that, having the thinnest possible layer for the heat to have to transfer through to get into the, the cooling plate and to sink that heat away. You could use a more thermally conductive material. Liquid metal thermal pastes are up to 70 watts per meter Kelvin, but that's still not as good as just direct aluminium or copper. So again, even with liquid metal, you still want to use as little as you can reasonably get away with to fill in those air gaps, but not effectively create an insulator blanket between your cooler and your CPU. But when using a thermal pad like this, well, what you're doing is basically putting a very fixed thermal blanket over or in between those chips. It's pretty thick and it means that you're replacing any level of direct contact that could be made thanks to paste being, well, a liquid and can move out of the way or just having an incredibly thin layer you're replacing it with a much thicker layer of just six watts per meter Kelvin of thermal conductivity, which is essentially the same as just putting a blanket over your CPU. So if they're not for cooling your CPU, what are these pads actually for? Well, you've probably seen them poking out of motherboard VRMs or on graphics cards. These are great for components that either don't generate too much heat and don't need too much heat sinked away, or are just a good solution to cooling complex shapes and heights without having, uh, or using a single block and without having expensive machining to make sure every single level is just perfect. Sure, thermal paste would be more thermally efficient, but for the source of applications where you'll find these, outright efficiency doesn't matter as much as just actually cooling the parts and cooling them evenly. Plus, these are more durable, so they're, while paste is, is likely to dry out and become less efficient over time, uh, these pads, while they do age and wear, they age at a much slower rate, at least by comparison. So if you need to repaste your GPU or replace your motherboard's VRM heat sinks, or maybe you just want to cool your shiny new Gen 4 NVMe SSD's controller, 
then yeah, take a look at these pads from Arctic. Uh, they sent over both the uh, the high performance uh, APT 2560s, but also their more budget friendly APT 2012, which is a much larger pad uh, and a good bit cheaper. So take a look. But if you're planning on you know actually repasting the GPU die or installing a CPU, then yeah, stick with the stick with the thermal paste for now. It is also worth mentioning that this isn't the only style of thermal pad that is on the market. You might have seen the graphene based pads, which are incredibly thin uh, and have much better thermal conductivity than this. But the same principle applies that the layer of graphene is still going to be uh, less conductive or less thermally efficient than having any level of direct contact between them. Uh, and so it's unlikely that you're going to have uh, a significant benefit from buying one of those relatively expensive pads versus just buying a large tube of thermal paste if you're swapping out your components relatively often. Now, with that said, you've heard the, the, the thoughts on, in the video. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think of the, the comparison between the two? Of course, uh, are you uh, insane enough to run a thermal pad or would you prefer one of those sort of graphene style ones or are you just fine with some thermal paste instead? Feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you want to see more videos like this one on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday basis, hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. I'll also leave links to the uh, Arctic, both the, the thermal paste and the thermal pads in the description down below. Those will likely be Amazon affiliate links that will take you to your local Amazon store. We can see pricing when and where you watch this because it can and does vary. And there's also a whole load of other links in the description you can check out too. Uh, ways to support the channel, picking up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one, uh, or a load of other designs I made myself. Uh, or you can support directly through Patreon or even the new YouTube join button where you get access to our Money Men Discord chat, sponsor free videos, and some cool emojis to use in the comments and on our weekly live streams as well. I'll leave some more videos on the end cards, probably the uh, push-pull configuration video uh, that I do recommend you check out if you're interested in, well, cooling your, your CPU and that kind of thing. And yeah, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.